China set out to stop the desert with the world's largest reforestation push, 66 billion trees and $13 billion across a region larger than India. But most of those trees are now dead, entire forests wiped out by pests and water vanishing underground. How did ambition on this scale go so disastrously wrong? The lesson behind China's Three North Shelter Belt is one almost no one expected, and it is still unfolding. To keep learning from real cases, proven solutions, and examples that challenge what we think is possible, stay connected and follow the channel. Because to understand how something this vast went off course, we need to go back to where it all began. In 1978, China's leaders approved a plan that dwarfed any environmental project attempted before. The blueprint stretched across 13 provinces in the vast arid north, an expanse of more than 4 million square kilometers reaching from the edge of the Gobi Desert to the mountains of Manchuria. This was the Three North Shelter Belt, often called the Great Green Wall. Its stated mission was as sweeping as its reach, to halt the advance of the desert, protect farmland and cities from choking dust storms, and transform bare wind-scoured plains into green corridors. The numbers alone defy imagination. Over 70 years, the program set out to raise forest cover from just 5% to nearly 15%, planting billions of trees in belts hundreds of kilometers long. Official accounts describe an investment of more than $13 billion by 2022, with headline figures of 66 billion trees planted. The promise was clear. A living barrier that would stop sandstorms before they reached Beijing shield crops and villages, and reclaim land lost to shifting dunes. Maps at the time showed a bold green arc cutting across the north of China like a new man-made frontier. In speeches and campaigns, central planners declared desertification would be stopped, dust storms eliminated, and a new era of ecological security achieved. The vision was nothing less than the largest reforestation effort in human history driven by the belief that with enough will and resources, even nature's harshest boundaries could be redrawn. In practice, planting trees across the harsh northern plains did not create the forests planners envisioned. Field studies from Beijing Forestry University reveal a stark reality. In the driest belts, only 15% of trees survived their first few years. The rest withered and died leaving rows of brittle trunks scattered across the sand. Local forestry bureaus faced relentless pressure to meet ambitious targets set by central authorities. When seedlings failed, new batches were rushed in to replace them, sometimes every spring, sometimes several times in a single year. This cycle of planting, dying, and replanting became routine. Official statistics counted every sapling pushed into the ground but survival was rarely tracked with the same rigor. In some counties, the same plots were replanted so many times that the reported number of trees bore little resemblance to the living landscape. The result was an illusion of progress. Billions of trees planted, but only a fraction enduring the region's relentless sun and wind. Instead of growing forests, the program produced a pattern of short-lived greenery followed by mass die-off a treadmill that consumed money and labor without delivering lasting results. For many on the ground, especially county officials and field workers, the pressure to show quick results often outweighed any focus on ecological fit or long-term health. The vast scale of the project masked a simple truth. Planting was easy to count, but survival was hard to achieve. In the spring of 2000, a silent invader swept through the poplar shelter belts of Ningxia, the Asian longhorned beetle, a wood-boring insect native to East Asia, found itself in a landscape almost tailor-made for destruction, mile after mile of genetically identical poplar trees planted shoulder to shoulder across the dry northern plains. With no diversity to slow its progress, the beetle population exploded. Larvae tunneled through trunks, eating the trees from the inside out. Within months, vast stretches of what was called the Green Wall were reduced to dead and dying timber. Forestry crews faced an impossible task. In a desperate attempt to contain the outbreak, millions of trees were cut down and burned. Provincial reports described entire counties stripped of their shelter belts, 
two decades of work erased in a single season. In some areas, poplars that once stood as windbreaks and dust barriers became nothing more than dry fuel for emergency fires. The losses defied easy calculation. Forestry experts estimated that hundreds of millions, possibly close to one billion trees, were killed or removed. The beetle outbreak did not just destroy trees, it exposed the fundamental weakness of monoculture design. When every tree is the same, a single pest can bring down the whole system. The dead wood left behind continued to draw precious water from the ground, compounding the stress on already fragile land. For the communities who had invested years in planting and tending these forests, the devastation was total, a living lesson in what happens when ecological diversity is ignored. Jingbian County once stood as a showcase for rapid greening on China's northern frontier. Rows of poplars and sea buckthorn stretched across the sandy plains, promising both shelter and a new source of timber. But beneath the surface, a hidden crisis was unfolding. As plantations expanded, the thirst of millions of fast-growing trees began to outpace what the land could provide. Compared to native grasses and shrubs, poplars draw on average 20 to 40 percent more water. In a region where annual rainfall barely meets the needs of native steppe plants, this extra demand set off a slow-motion collapse. Hydrologists tracked the consequences over decades. In parts of the Loess Plateau, groundwater that once sat within easy reach of a shovel now lies as much as 20 meters deeper. Some wells that once supplied entire villages have run dry, forcing residents to drill again and again, each time at greater cost and risk. In Jingbian, scientists watched as soil moisture vanished from beneath the plantations, leaving even the hardiest trees to wither. Desertification returned, erasing the early gains. Across the wider Three North region, projections warned that if current planting patterns continue, the annual water deficit could reach 110 billion cubic meters, far more than these drylands can sustainably supply. The promise of a green wall came at the price of groundwater, and for many communities, the well is running out. Spring winds sweep across northern China, carrying dust from the Gobi and Inner Mongolian deserts. Each year, thick clouds of sand race toward Beijing and neighboring cities. Despite the vast shelter belts planted to intercept these storms, the reality on the ground remains unchanged for millions living downwind. Major dust events continue to blanket urban skylines, forcing residents indoors and disrupting daily life. Scientific measurements reveal why. The most powerful dust plumes travel high above the treetops, sometimes hundreds of meters off the ground. No matter how many rows of trees are planted, these airborne storms pass overhead untouched by the green wall below. Local shelter belts can slow winds and trap sand at field level, but they cannot block the regional or transboundary dust storms that shape the climate of northern China. For Beijing and other cities, the promise of a protective barrier has not materialized. The flagship metric, ending large-scale dust storms, remains unmet, exposing a gap between official ambition and atmospheric reality. Jiang Gaoming of the Chinese Academy of Sciences summed up the core problem bluntly. Planting dense forests in arid and semi-arid regions violates ecological principles. Much of northern China, he said, is meant to be grassland or shrubland, ecosystems shaped by drought and wind over thousands of years. When restoration efforts work with these realities, the results are striking. In Ethiopia, a method called farmer-managed natural regeneration protects native seedlings and rootstocks already adapted to local conditions. Survival rates reach as high as 85% at a cost of just three to $400 per hectare, far below the billion spent on failed plantations. In Sudan and across the Sahel, native acacias thrive where imported species would perish. These trees evolved for the heat and dryness, providing both economic value and long-term stability. The lesson is not about planting more trees, it is about choosing the right species and letting nature lead. Where restoration listens to local ecology, resilience follows. Today, billions more are budgeted and nature's rules remain unchanged. Ambition alone cannot restore landscapes, only ecological wisdom can. Every failed forest warns us, 
respect the limits, or repeat the losses. The world's largest lesson now asks, will we finally start learning or just keep planting mistakes? Thanks for watching. So, here's the uncomfortable question this story leaves us with. What if planting billions of trees was never the solution? China tried to stop the desert with scale, money, and ambition on a level the world had never seen, and still, most of those forests failed. Not because the effort was small, but because it ignored how the land actually works. This isn't a story about bad intentions. It's a warning about what happens when we fight nature instead of listening to it. When we count trees planted instead of trees surviving. When we force forests where grasslands were meant to be. And that's why I want you to watch the next video I'm leaving on screen. Because in Ethiopia, the opposite approach is working restoring entire forests without planting trees at all. No massive plantations, no monocultures. Just protecting what's already there and letting nature lead. If this video changed how you think about reforestation, that one will completely flip your perspective. And if you want to go even deeper into why some restoration projects fail while others succeed, I also recommend the podcast linked here, where we break this down without hype, without shortcuts. If this kind of content resonates with you, let me know. Leave a comment, hit like, and if I see that you are enjoying these deeper dives, I'll keep making more. The next video is right here. See you there.